we could reflect today on the freedoms that we enjoy in this country and the blessings of those who have served. We think of the freedom spiritually that we have from sin, from death, and the devil by the greatest servant of all, our Savior Jesus. Paul rejoices in Romans 8 as we rejoice with him in those freedoms. What shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is God's word. Passage of God's word that we'd like to reflect briefly on this morning uh, takes us to the Gospel of John. We we'll read from John 20, uh, the 27th verse. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. I would imagine a good number of people here today enjoy watching military-related movies and miniseries. Some of you I bet have even watched in the last couple of nights the special on Vietnam. I bet many of you have had opportunity to watch Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks collection Band of Brothers, or maybe The Pacific. Just recently, together with Mr. Shebo, we finished watching The Pacific on our lunch breaks here at Luther High School. It only took two months. And there's one character in that series, The Pacific, that st st stuck with me. His name was John Basilow. Maybe you've even heard of him, even if you haven't seen The Pacific. There's a parade in his honor every year in his hometown in New Jersey. He came back from the war after his first tour to sell bonds because he was an American hero. The Pacific shows exactly how John Basil got to that point, and it's truly, truly a remarkable story. It isn't just that he fought valiantly, it's some of the circumstances under which he fought. On October 24th, 1942, on the island in the Battle of Guadalcanal, John Basil almost single-handedly preserved the American victory running back and forth between those who were trying to hold off the Japanese advance. He put his life in danger multiple times to retrieve ammunition for his men. He fought with his machete and his 45 caliber pistol, hand-to-hand -hand combat, making the Japanese retreat. Many of his fellow soldiers could hardly believe the courage that he showed as he was unjamming the guns and constantly at their sides with support. And for his efforts, he received the Medal of Honor. For a whole year after that, he was back in the United States selling war bonds. But he didn't feel right about abandoning his fellow soldiers. He wanted to go back to the Pacific Theater for more action, and he got his wish. He joined the Marines again at the Battle of Iwo Jima. And there, in February of 1945, John Maslow lost his life in that battle. 
For his bravery and his service to his country, he was also awarded the Navy Cross. No other Marine in World War II was highly as highly decorated as John Bassett, receiving both the Medal of Honor and the Navy Cross. Some of the things we're going to see today from our students in the presentations are the marks of service of our military branches. It's a neat thing, looking at those marks of service. Highly decorated soldiers, those who have served our country so well. But it isn't the marks that we celebrate only today. We celebrate the willingness of so many men and women to go and serve in places so that our freedoms here in this country are preserved. And as I thought about those marks of service and all of the men and women who have gone before us and who are still serving today in our military, it made me think of Jesus and the greatest service of all. I want you to listen again to the words from John 20. And I bet you've already put together exactly when Jesus spoke these words. But hear them again, John 20, verse 27. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Peace be with you. Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. You haven't figured out? Remember when this happened? One week after Jesus rose from the dead? I bet you remember what happened the previous week, don't you? Jesus appeared to the disciples in that room that was all locked up because of fear of the Jews. And he showed his disciples his hands and his side, giving them convincing proofs that he was really him. He was alive. He had risen from the dead. But you remember, don't you, that Thomas wasn't there. And even though all of the disciples said to him, Thomas, we've seen the Lord. He's alive. Thomas refused to believe, saying, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and the piercing in his side, I will believe it. So Jesus granted him his wish, didn't he? Jesus came one week later to that same room, and he walks right over to Thomas. Put your fingers in my hands. See those hands. Reach out and put your hand into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Jesus' proof of his resurrection were those marks to Thomas. The nail marks in his hands, the piercing of his side. Those are Jesus' marks of service for you and for me. That's what Jesus came to this earth to do. Can we stop and think about how amazing that is often enough? What would make Jesus want to do that? Leave the perfection of heaven. Be subject to nails driven into his hands and feet. Suffering a horrible death for you and for me. That's not how we think. Is it? Our thoughts aren't from other people. We don't have by nature the thoughts of how can I serve others today? No, our thoughts are directed to ourselves. There's no one in my life more important than me. That's what my sinful nature says. And my thoughts and my words and my actions are far too often self-centered and selfish. And yet I'm one, just like you, who Jesus came to this world to die for. Those marks of service that he showed Thomas, he shows to you. Look at his hands. The nail marks there are for you. Look at his side. The piercing is for you. Consider it. What Jesus did. 
came to this earth not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus himself said, greater love has no one than this, that he give up his life for his friends. We have no business being called Jesus' friends. And yet, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us so that we can live, live with him forever in the glory of heaven. The exact opposite of what our sins deserve. That's the greatest service of all. It's those marks of service of Jesus that inspire and motivate us to serve. We want to live thankful lives by looking at how we can serve others just as Jesus served us. Look for those opportunities in your life, ways that you can reflect God's love for you as you show kindness and love to others. It's Christ's love that compels us. We're convinced that he died for all, and therefore all died, and he died for all so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Today we honor those who selflessly serve our country. That's a lesson for us too, isn't it? The ability to put others first. From Jesus, from our veterans. See again the marks of service of so many who have preserved our freedoms. And see the nail marks of service in Jesus' hands. And the piercing of service in his side with the eyes of your faith. And rejoice. Your place in heaven is secure. Amen. Join together in the prayer as it is listed. I'd like to briefly tell you a little about the history of Veterans Day, or Armistice Day, as it was originally called. And it all began after World War I which was considered to be the war and all wars. It's hard to imagine that World War I involved 35 countries, lasted five years from 1914 to 1918. And it's hard to, and the United States, however, was only involved for two years, 1917 to 1918. This was more than enough Time, however, to claim too many lives. And people held tight to the notion that this would be the very last war. When the fighting stopped, leaders of the warring countries signed an armistice on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. An armistice is an agreement by the warring nations to stop all fighting. In other words, a truce. This truce was signed on November 11, 1918, at 11 a.m. in the morning. This is important to know because Veterans Day was originally called Armistice Day, Armistice Day. And this day was set aside to reflect and remember the sacrifices of men and women made during World War I in order to ensure peace. The first official celebration was on November 11th in 1919. Veterans who survived the war marched in parades and were hometown heroes. Ceremonies were held and speeches were made. World War I was called the war to end all wars because everyone hoped there would never be another. Ironically, we have been at eight wars of conflicts since World War I. Almost 20 years later, in 1938, our Congress voted Armistice Day a federal holiday. Unfortunately, the very next year, in 1939, World War II began. This ended the theory of no more wars. And it was that that the progression of war came, the predictable progression of death. 
Over 16 and a half million Americans took part in the World War II. 407,000 died in service. Over 292,000 died during battle. After World War II, Armistice Day was still celebrated on November 11th. Around 1953, people began calling it Veterans Day. This was a thanks and remembrance to the veterans in their hometowns and villages. Many people believe that peace was preserved not only by World War I, but World War II and then the Korean War as well. Congress decided to change the day to an occasion to honor those who had served America in all wars. In 1954, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed a bill proclaiming November 11th each year as Veterans Day. Every year on November 11th, we observe a moment of silence at 11 a.m. in the morning. And remember, those who fought and died during the time of war. A war was sustained it was in honor of World War I. Veterans Day is in honor of every day of every war that the United States has fought. Separate ceremonies and commemoration events occur every year as we are doing here today. It is important on this day to give thanks for times of peace and to remember who's protecting your rights and freedoms every day. I'm Jeremiah Wanky. I would like to welcome you to Veterans Day. Today, we will present an overview of the dress of food uniforms and insignias of the five branches of the United States Armed Forces. I will be telling you about the dress of blue uniforms and medals of the Army that are to be worn for formal events. The new Army service uniform is rooted in tradition. In March 1778, a congressional resolution directed General George Washington to prescribe the service uniform. The Continental Army's blue uniform distinguished them from the British red coats during the Revolutionary War. Dark blue remained the traditional color of most U.S. Army uniforms from 1776 until 1902. Since 2006, all U.S. Army personnel wear the current dress blue uniforms such as, such as Sergeant Gordon is wearing now. His Army blue uniform consists of a dark blue coat, light blue, blue trousers, a white turned down collar shirt, a black necktie, and a dark blue service cap. The regular army buttons on the coat are yellow gold plated with the coat of arms of the United States superimposed. Sergeant Gordon's dress blue uniform has other distinguishing features. The combat service identification badge is centered between the bottom of the pocket flap and the bottom of the pocket. His rank of sergeant is seen on both sleeves. Sergeant Gordon's unit is displayed on the left shoulder and his combat patch is on the right. Service stripes are on the left sleeve. One stripe is equal to three years. Sergeant Gordon's three stripes are reflective of his nine years of service in the United States Army. The two gold-colored cross muskets on his left collar and the blue braids over and under his right shoulder signify that he was part of an infantry division. Some of the other colored braids are red for medical, maroon for airborne, yellow for armor, and scarlet for artillery. On the right breast are Sergeant Gordon's name and unit badges. His individual qualifications and individual medals are on the left breast. His military decorations include the Army Commendation Medal with three oak leaf clusters, the Overseas Service Ribbon with three device, the Iraq Campaign Medal with four campaign stars, the Global War on Terrorism Medal, and the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, all of these which indicate that he was deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom through October 2003 through October 2004, June 2006 through September 2009, 
and August 2009 through July 2010. He has also been awarded the Army Achievement Medal with one Oak Leaf Cluster, the Army Good Conduct Medal with two knots, the National Defense Service Medal, the Non-Commissioned Officer Professional Development Ribbon, the Army Service Ribbon, the Basic Army Recruiter Badge, the Expert Caribbean Qualification, the Driver's Badge with Wheel Device, the Combat Infantryman Badge, the Valorous Unit Award with one Oak Leaf Cluster, the Superior Unit Award, and the Meritorious Unit Combination with one Oak Leaf Cluster. Sergeant Gordon, we are proud and grateful of your faithful service.
Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, is a United States Armed Forces Military Award created by President George W. Bush on March 12, 2003, by executive order. It recognizes those military service members who have been deployed overseas in direct service to the war on to the war on terror from September 11, 2001, to a date to be determined. This bronze medal has a shield adapted from the Great Seal of the United States, surmounting two sword hilts, enclosed with a wreath of laurel, overall, and eagle, where the wings displayed is grasping a serpent and its claws. On the reverse side of the medal are the eagle, serpent, and swords from the front of the medal with an encircling inscription, War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal. We thank Aviation Boat Slay Lane 2nd Class Air Warfare Service Warfare John M. Hentoy for his faithful service for our nation. Rifle marksman, 
rifle sharpshooter, and the highest rifle expert. The high power is a symbol of the leather neck guards worn by the Continental Marines during the Revolutionary War to protect the sword wounds. The cover worn on the Marine's head is a symbolic part of the dress boot, because on the cover is the emblem of the United States Marine Corps, an emblem that had significantly changed since 1868, the eagle, globe, and anchor. The eagle represents freedom, the globe represents worldwide service, and the anchor represents the Marines' naval heritage. Since November 10, 1775, the Marines have been everywhere, ready to fight, so we don't have to. The Marine Corps has a proud and selfless history, a history that is reflected in the dress boots. Every Marine lives by the core values of honor, courage, and commitment. The least we can do to honor these brave Americans is remember and respect the sacrifice that they made and still make every day as our nation's tip of the spear. So you and I don't need to worry about having to fight for our freedom. Special thanks to Sergeant Turner, Sergeant Larson, and Sergeant Castro, and Semper Fi Marines.
At this time, we would like to acknowledge the Luther alumni present who have served our our service in our Air National Guard. Congrats. Or later are reflected 
are entitled to reflect all Air Force Service Stewards credited during their career. The Coast Guard's Sea Service Medal was created in 1984 and is awarded to those members of the Coast Guard who served more than 12 consecutive months of sea duty on board the Coast Guard Cutter, attached to a fleet training group, or on board certain other Coast Guard and non Coast Guard vessels that are under official Coast Guard orders. At this time, we would like to acknowledge the Ruth Alumni President who have served or are serving. For uh, Operation Homefront Cutters started nationally in February 2002 out of California. And in 2005, uh, we felt a real need to have something like that in our area. So um, I and a group of people got together and brought a chapter of Operation Homefront to the La Crosse Crew region in May of 2005. And then in September 2008, we went statewide. So we are now able to provide the services that we do for our families and our troops um, around the whole state of Wisconsin. The reason we did that was because of the large deployment of the Wisconsin National Guard that happened that year of over 3,500 of our local citizens from the state of Wisconsin serving in that Wisconsin National Guard. And so that you understand, if you haven't heard about Operation Homefront, our mission is to provide emergency financial assistance to the families of our service members and wounded warriors and what that means over this time period is we fixed a lot of cars. It seems like that is the need, the most emergency need that comes up so that the service member's family can't get around. We connect with local contractors and ask if they'll fix those for free. And then we'll provide the parts um, that they can pay for it through fundraising efforts that we did. And it has worked incredibly well because of the citizens of the state and how much they appreciate the service of our veterans and our service members. And so we're really grateful that um, we've been able to partner with the citizens of especially this area and do the many things that we're able to do to provide that assistance. Uh, one of the things we also do is provide um, packaging events. And those are the families that come, they make up those packages for the, the family members they have overseas. And then we also send get their packages to those that we get things for. Um, if someone knows someone over there. And if you do have someone over there that you're serving, or you do know someone, please connect with us and we'll be happy to send your packages over. Let them know that we at home are thinking of them, appreciating what they're doing for our submarine who just recently left in the last three days to go to Afghanistan. And as we talk about her putting that hair package together and the excitement and the joy in her face as she put those things lovingly in that box. These are where your items are going to go to people like that. And she said that when the sun left, even in this day of computers and in this day of cell phones, he told her, Mom, you probably won't hear from me for quite a while. And he was going to be deployed for seven months. And she said, because of the nature of their business and what they'd be doing, he wouldn't have access to those things that were moving around a lot. And so for a mom to send her son off for seven months, wanting him to come home safe, and he was able to put those care package items in, it gave her that satisfaction that there was something she could do. Because as a mom, you feel pretty helpless when you're here at home and your loved ones are overseas in harm's way. And so I really appreciate the gifts that you brought here today. And I know the moms that will be sending those over, the wives, and even the children that come that have a dad or mom over to fill those packages up. It means a lot to them. It means a lot to them because they know they're not in this alone. There are many people like you supporting them, um, showing your support by doing things like that and writing their cards and letters, and it means the world. We also have that contact with the captain who's over in Afghanistan with the women. They too are in a very remote area of Afghanistan. This is a rough place for them to be. And he shared that they're in such a remote place that they don't have showers. So you can imagine they're in the heat, the dust, the desert, and no showers. And that puts at home what that would be like. So we're sending them big wipes that they can wash down with and, and be able to clean every day with. Um, but 
but how difficult life would be when you can't run to a food strip store and pick up that snack item that maybe you're craving. So think about that, kids, the next time you go and you fulfill a need or you're like, gosh, I sure can't wait to get that snack bar. They don't have that luxury or that opportunity, but they're willing to do that so that we can be free. And I've heard so many of them say that. They're willing to do that to keep this nation in the way it is. So we do all that when we do that gratitude. That's why our Christian Home Farm exists, because we want to show that. And uh, we want to show that with all of your help. And so we really appreciate that. Thank you for being a part of this with us. Um, know that uh, troops will be receiving these items, and it will mean the world to them to open them up. And to have that luxury, you are provided them that quick stop that they can't do at a store. They can go to that box and find that item that they might have been craving or wanting or needing that day. So keep thinking of them. And I know this is a school that I've raised, and I ask you to pray for them. Pray for their, their successful missions and pray for their safety to come home. Safe to their families because the welcome home events are the best. And um, I appreciate all that you do here. And thank you for this wonderful Veterans Day ceremony and for teaching us all about what the uniforms are. Marvelous thing to learn and know about. And so we really appreciate your help and your support. And uh, keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Oh, 